side panel cut. I was going to cut the side panel crooked to match the floor. The floor is not level, but I can't cut it crooked because the bit I'm cutting, I want up next to the worktop. The bit that's not cut, I want next to the floor. Uh, that bit of floor is a wee bit high here. So all done, I've marked out where the board's going. I got a, a spare piece of uh, chipboard, put it down, draw the other line. So I'm going to just take away a small bit of this tile here, probably about as far as there, and that'll allow us to, to go on level. I'm going to try and use this wee tool. I don't think much of it, to be honest. Uh, for, I haven't used it very much. Uh, I've never rehearsed how to use it. I bought it when I was doing the fireplace in the living room. But I should go through these tiles here, like, but I'm not very impressed with it. It's turned on now, the man does it. Very noisy, what it does. You get the idea? I'll knock that wee bit out there with a screwdriver, because I don't want to go too far down and see how, how well it fits then. That's worked out pretty well now, now like, uh, it needs to be squared up, but, um, 100% level there, like. So what I'll do now is, uh, let's touch that wee bit at the back. I'll screw it on now to the worktop. Um, and then I'll put the wee fasteners to the floor. So if she's level at the back, get her squared off at the top. Use a spirit level for the front and then screw it to the floor. Uh, she's up a wee tiny bit here now, but that's alright. That'll stop the water. Because uh, from here back is touching the floor. Had to go on the floor a bit there. So if you're mopping the floor now, and the floor's a bit damp, it's not touching. Structurally wise, it ain't going. Once it's all screwed together, it's not going anywhere. So that's that's okay at that. I say so once I tile the floor, I'll probably cut another bit off this and refit. Probably not tile. I don't like tiles. Don't know what to do with the floor. Leave it the next year. Just put on a wee bit of waterproof glue. This is not to glue it. This is to just to make sure water doesn't get into it. Um, you use silicone. The problem with silicone or something like this. You sell a cone something, you leave it, you don't touch it. If you're moving things, I have to move this with my hands and all. Silicone gets on you and gets in everything you touch. On your tools, goes everywhere. This here, you can just wipe off in your clothes. And it wipes off a lot easier after, after siding all like. So that just helps keep it nice and waterproof there. I'll probably put silicone along here. Because when you put silicone there and you put the wee end cap on, that's it. You're not, you're not getting them on your hands. So I'll screw this in place now. When I'm squaring off a piece of wood. That button there is, is precise. The worktop's cut precise. There's a man getting it squared off. So the wood's, the wood's touching the wall at the bottom. Um, you can make sure the front's level. And when the front's level, it's going to be tiny bit, you know, be smudgy. Whenever the front's level, you put on your first bee fastener. Maybe I should change that there, you know. I don't want to see. Nah, she's all right. So I was on limits, on limits, wouldn't get any precise in that, very careful when I was hurling it out. You get the first one and next one now is to get it square this way. So the handy way of doing that, you can measure all you want and get it wrong. Get a scrap piece of wood, draw a wee line on it, where the tabletop is. You can bring it to the front, and you see now that has to bend in. So you push that in then, so it matches the same line. When it matches the same line, then put your next screw in. That's how it's squared off. And similar to the bottom, like the, your, your bottom is not, you know, the bottom is not as critical. Like well, as long as the top is hundred percent, the board's brand new. She should sit straight, so the bottom should be right. So that's a hard to be tip there instead of measuring. We block of wood, draw your pencil line, bring it across. Say that there was out like too far there. You bring it across, and then you push your board in until the pencil line marks up. So you're not worried about the bottom, you get the top 100% right. So even if you push it too far, you don't want to have under pressure, you want the top exactly right. And so you can see now I'm using wood glue, that'll all wipe off, silicone will be right mess. That's all covered in plastic as well, that plastic has peel off so I'm not funny. So I'll screw this in place now, a wee screw. So we've got our squared off at the top now, we've got it leveled off this way here. And the next thing now is to make sure She's not going crooked that way. Now, I have a line drawn on the back wall anyway. But the front, the front wants to move like. 
So what you do then is you get your spread level and put it to the front. And you move your panel until it's level again. You need two hands for this. And when it's level again, mark where the hole gets drilled. I need, three, I need three hands. I need to be an octopus. So once you get it level at the side, mark your wee hole, drill it, and that'll be her 100% square and level. All oh, bearing in mind that main unit's level too, like. There's no point in having one, so she needs a wee kick over to the side, and that'll get her dead level. I was down picking my car up, so that held me back now, so I'm back again this here. What I've said to do here, I've cut the floor out using a wee, um, what do we call that too? Because the washing machine is pretty heavy, so I've countersunk these brackets to hold up this side panel. And I actually make it a bit stronger too, and it means I can lift the side panel slightly off the floor when I screw it on. So I'm going to get them drilled on now, and put later on you put a wee bit of self leveling floor compound over the top of them and it'll be dead smooth. Uh, I've uh, put a wee metal bar in there. See the wee metal bar underneath? It just lifts it up and no more. Uh, if you look down, she's dead level now. Settles down, she's dead level that way. She's dead level this way. And before I put these two screws on, I've countersunk the two brackets. Before I put these screws on, she just needs a wee push to get her dead on that way. But that'll be better. Come on, get in focus. Just a wee smidgy, it's not much. And I'll just give push that bottom in the tiniest wee bit just before I put them screws in and it's about 100% then that's probably all it needs there now so that's her now 100% all right after I get that on I get the doors on and get these end panels on uh, I need to make sure that's square now that you know that you know mightn't be square yet because I, I had to get that pipe up I've taken it out from the wall so now that everything's all flat and level, so I'm out of squaring that up. Get on the doors and all, and um, get on the fancy panels and push these machines on. Uh, I was about to put these end panels on, and I was checking to make sure the cupboards were 100% uh, level and square and all the rest. Um, Why well, he's not going to focus again? But um, the problem is, this cupboard's not like touching the wall. You can kick it, it's going to move out of place. So I'm going to have to normally use these wee brackets, I can't use them because of the gap. This is the adjustable shelf and you get the nuts and bolts, I just cut a couple of these brackets off. Um, a couple of holes, sometimes you drill holes, you hit the mortar between the bricks, it doesn't hold. So I was able to go up another one, that wasn't holding. So the advantage of these holes here, like, there's plenty of them. So that's going to screw on there now. I have that leveled off at the back. That'll screw on there and then I'll screw onto the base unit. So I'll screw these ones on first, but I've got it level that way. And then what I make sure, I make sure she's horizontal that way, and then put the screws in sideways. That's it, she ain't going anywhere. So it doesn't matter if you bang it or what, it's going to be okay. These end panels go down to the floor, I've left a small gap. So I'm bringing these end panels down to the floor, leaving a small gap, because as I said in the machine, although I don't want no end panels showing there, because it gets in the way of the hoover and stuff, that is next to the machine anyway. There's two machines, so I'm going to bring the end panels just slightly off the floor. But I've got to make sure this is all square first. I've lost a set of hinges. I've lost two sets of hinges. That was a spare set I had to take back. It's just months ago since I bought the kitchen. God knows where the hinges are. So I've got hinges for one set of doors. I might take the hinges of one of them top cupboards. Because I need the doors on to make sure these end panels are on right. So I might have to take the hinges of one of them other ones temporarily. Because it'll turn up. It's them. I have one pair too many, so I've left them two pairs somewhere. Get these screwed on. Got the holes off the other side. Get the end panels on then. So I get that end panel on first. But that's why it has to be all square. Uh, my plumbing. It's all finished. My plumbing's all finished now. No leaks. So I'm quite pleased with the plumbing. Uh, the dishwasher now. I'll go on and plug in there. So I have the dishwasher. This is going tonight. This is finished tonight. So from tonight onwards, I'll be using this kitchen. Uh, hopefully I get that hob in tonight. It doesn't have to be wired up. I'll wire it up to the switch, but the switch isn't actually wired up. So I'm waiting to see how far this sits out above the doors to find out how far this has to go to match. One hand needs another. So we'll get this screwed on now. What I'm about to do here now is highly illegal. You are not allowed to do this in any country. There's a washer. There's a screw. 
screw goes into the washer make you think and just about holes just about probably them washers and all now that's all right i'm using that but the thing is i need four washers to hold these wee tiny screws don't have any small washers i need a big washer to cover the hole in the metal but i need a small screw and as you can see that doesn't hold or fall through it goes through um i have done this 25 years ago was the last time i done this the reason why i done it was for the motorbike i'm leading up to it now i did it for the motorbike because uh i needed a washer and this idea was cheap and it doesn't rust if you leave that in the rain that rust see this one p coin that will not rust if you leave it lying in the rain so we see this here now look you're not allowed to use money for melting down that penny costs more than a penny to make you might as well cost to make a penny you're not allowed to destroy deliberately destroy money like i'm going to make it some dead washer this wee bit might be a bit small but start off a small bit Oh, but it's blunt. I must get a sharper bit. So I've got a bigger bit now. It's probably the size of bit I would need anyway. But sometimes I always hand stuff for a small one. So they're not made of copper no more. A uh, copper coin will stick to a magnet. But they still won't rust the same. Now if I put my screw in now. Look at that boys. There's a washer. This is what I want the washer for now. I had to go through this metal here and to cover the holes up. See, like so. That's a wee tip of the day. I need four of these. That's only cost me 4p. See, by the time I would go down to screw fix and probably use two pounds of fuel, sit in a traffic jam, carbon and all the rest. How many people use pennies? People throw them in the street, they won't even pick them up anymore. So the brackets on the wall. I have to put my wee copper washers, but before I do that, I check its level. And as you can see it's not so what it needs is the bottom kicked in a bit and make that bracket tighter so I'll just bag it with my hand if that doesn't work at the feet see if you tap the feet with something move it there a couple of millimeters check if it's level again closer closer so I'm just going to, just going to need a wee bit of persuading so I'll bend that in and once it's in place 100% level then put the wee screw in then Job done. She's not 100% perfect, but I, I can only move her so much. So it's still fun the black lines, like, and the last wee bit of can be adjusted by the doors. But when I put on these here now, we see the wee torch. I lost the torch. Where's the torch? When I put on these screws now, I'll put the screws on the left hand side of the hole. So there's no way it can. It, in fact, you know what? Should be the right hand side of the row. No, so that's so I can push it in a bit more. That's I. So it can't pull out no more. That's the idea. It can push in, but it can't pull out. If it pushes in, it's going the right way. So there's how maybe wash actually works now, you see. That's a good job there now. That's a not rust. Rust proof. There's the job now, it's finished. So that holds that steady. And it just tension up the feet then. Do the same now to the other side. I wouldn't think there's so much work involved. See if somebody fitted your kitchen, they wouldn't go to this hassle. They'll just bung it in, stick it in a bit crooked, and do all the adjustments with the doors. There's the end result now with the panel on. I started to put the plant and do this side, but I'm checking this machine now. So the piping goes in there now, like. So it's easy enough to get in there and grab the pipes and connect it all up. And I've cut the panel short on the far side. So I can get my hand and put the room to um, connect up them pipes. And as a matter of sliding it in, it's going to slide it in. You see that panel doesn't go the whole way back. If I bought a full panel, it's £42. That half panel there was £50. Unbelievable. But the reason why I pay £50 for the, the MB panels is because it's got gloss here. The, the big panels are not gloss. Sorry, sorry, stupid. Like, you need to be a bit of gloss in life. So, i get this pushed in now. I have the wee brackets countersunk and all should go well. Let's see. Uh, I've left that bigger than 60, it should be up 61. You know, I didn't even check the measurements then. What did I end up with? I don't know if I out. I want that wiggle space, you see. I want it so tight because 
Ah, there, boys. 61 there. See, that's, that's precision for you there, like. People just think I make it up in my head. So, half a centimeter on each side will not be seen. And with the gloss and all in it, I've kept the tabletop out deeper than normal. That's why I put that button at the back. That button holds the whole unit out further than normal. So, that should get the machine completely under. You can't be too far under. The machine's designed to stick away past anyway. If it's too far under, you just can't get out the, the soap powder thing right. Uh, can't have the tabletop out anymore, or you won't get out the handles. So, that's the way things work out. So let's see now if it all works out now and push this down. It's a fun way, so I can't tape it like. Look, that's the old fashioned days, the A++++. That's probably an E now, under the new markings. 190 kilowatts a year. I wouldn't use 190 kilowatts a year. I make sure to do bung full before I turn it on. I put it on um, economy 7 all the time, off peak. So we're going to push down. I noticed the old hose had a kink on it. I wasn't going to trust that. You might not there was to go that you see now with double glazing your house is more likely to flood because of one of these pipes that's not that but you know them um outdoor taps you got years ago in being q self plumbed up yourself and used these pipes people forget the pipes could be 20 30 years old uh that machine's not very old but that's got kinked it must have been in the, in the old cupboard like that's a machine used to go walking in the old cupboard i would just push it in so I have this brand new hose in the shed. That's about 10 years old, never used. And if she's in her way now, that's the way she come coil. If I put this on now, she's going to coil back up again. And because of the extra space behind, she won't kink. Guaranteed not to kink that one there now. So I just coil up the way it came out of the pack as I push it in. Um, I can get my hand around the side, I'm ready to check on it. I'll take a photograph once she's in, make sure there's no kinks. But that's more likely how your house is going to flood. It's not because our pipe's going to come off a sink. It's going to be like an end pipe, sir. There's a washing machine in now. You can see half a centimetre gap. You'd barely see it. And the glass panels all around now. Like, I think that's pretty neat there. So when I get the keyboard on, pretty neat, pretty neat. Not rocking and all, it's just dead level. So it wasn't rocking when I put it in before, it's just dead level on that floor. So it always rocked a bit on the other floor. Water and all is turned on. I adjusted the angle of that fitting a wee bit. Didn't matter before because it had no side on, now the side's on. And then whenever the curtains all go on there, that'd be grand. Because I probably didn't have another door now. So I'm going to pull one of these doors off, put it down there and get the dishwasher on. And then I get the platform, get the wee backboard on. I'm not going to glue this on. I'm going to use silicone to hold it on. So I'll put silicone the whole way along the back and glue that. The glue is, rather than use instant nails or stuff like that, double glaze, glazing people would use silicone. So I'm just going to use the silicone to hold that whole backboard on. That'll be that side finished. I thought about it had all finished today, but having to go and get the carry fix is a hassle. Like, And then I'll go away to get the carry fix and I'll have to walk around it. And that seems like getting three walks of this instead of two, like, on day one. This is a very good girl, she's lying on a wee bed. So, get that door off, get the hinges off, I need two hinges, get it on there, get the other door on, and then uh, get the dishwasher on. I got all that plumbing funny, so from tomorrow onwards, I'm in my new kitchen. Got my fridge and all in now, but I can't turn it on until, um, because I left it in sideways, you have to leave it a couple of hours before I can turn it on. But uh, all my plumbing all worked out alright in here. I have to get a shelf in here now. Um, I put on two waste pipes. So if that ever has to be changed to a waste disposal, it's got its own waste pipe. Uh, the on and off is on there. The taps go on up there. So that's straightforward enough. Power socket for the dishwasher. Power socket for the washing machine. So I switch the washing machine on up here. I got the machines well in. So they're not sticking out too far. Uh, the end panels is on, uh, but these end panels don't. What I have to do now is um, get the kicker board on here and get this backboard attached on. Uh, as you see, the sinks, I've been using the sinks all wet. Back here is dry. My other kitchen would have been soaking back there, so that's nice and dry. Uh, the other side now, we've got the hob to go on. But I had to get that one done first to see how far it comes out past because I, I, I moved this unit out further than it should be 
I see that bat in the wood. So this unit is out more, so it hides the machines. Wild hassle getting that sink in. So tomorrow, I'm, I don't know if I get time to. I'm running up and down the place with the car, taking the car down on Monday, bringing the car up today, going to the brother's house to lift out wood, dumping the skip, because my other brother, he's getting a uh, bathroom done, there's a skip out there. Uh, I clean my fridge and all down, change the doors around. Uh, so now you get me out now, like. But uh, all the plumbing's finished, everything's working. Dishwasher's working, washing machine's working. So even the dishwasher's are nice and tight. Nothing's slipping the way out. Um, I get the hob done tomorrow and I get that board in. And the kitchen's workable then. And then uh, once once it's, because I'm fed up run between kitchens. Uh, now that the brother skips there, I'm going to rub the tiles off the old kitchen and get them dumped in the skip. So I might end up leaving that board to make use of the skip. I don't know if I've really shown this or not. Now that this sink is on here, I got to get the next tabletop the same as that. So I'll just start off with this one first because I want the washing machines to be underneath. So this tabletop will be actually slightly wider than that tabletop. They're all the same width but they have to be cut to size. I didn't cut this one to size. I want the extra width. But I've got to get the two of them to match now. You see the distance. See I put my hand in there now it's not catching. Well, if I left that like that you wouldn't get your hand in. Now I've pulled that out a wee bit. You get the idea. But um, I think the hand is way up and Working on this for a while to find out how to do it. Scrap piece of wood and uh, that my link's drawn now. Open up the doors. You can't go up the doors because the doors can be just as well. You've got to get the actual carcass itself. Draw a line, whatever one you want. Bear in mind it's curved, so you have to really just see your line. Um, I have then pulled the tabletop out, delivered a gap. What I'll do then. This is my scribe block. I'm going to use that block to scribe. So what I do then, I set that scribe block up on here. And then, I can't do it with two, with the other hand. Then what I would do then, when that's set up on there, with two hands, I hold that in front of it. Until that line lines up with the front of this base unit. So when that lines up, when them two is together and like that, and that lines up, all I have to do then is take this piece, put it to the wall, draw a line, so you see where it's away out there, if I draw a line the whole way along, in theory, when that's cut, and that tabletop's pushed back, it should match. I'll see if it works. So I get my wee block of wood there, and I just hold it to the wall, and draw my pencil line. And as the wall was crooked, this board goes in and out, and then this tabletop will be cut. The exact shape. Now the time I was taking me before, I leaned against the tabletop and pushed it in. So you make sure you don't push the tabletop in while you're doing this. I spend more time thinking than I actually do cutting the boards. Once you cut the boards, too late. And then I'll double check all this again now just to make sure my theory is right before I go in. Um, the top of my head now, that's scraped to the wall, alright, but I don't think it's right, I think more has to come off. So I'll double check the measurements, going by that there, there. So what might have to be done is maybe a second there come off. So I'll just have to double check these measurements. Just thinking of the, no, it should be right enough. When, there's back that, when I take that amount away, that's how much it sticks out. So, it's actually less than I thought, you know. I thought there would be more, but no, it seems to be right. But the end result we're looking for. Oh, I haven't got the soft, soft closure yet. That's, uh, because I have that, uh, I cut that on it. It's definitely not too small. That must be it. So you see where the wall comes out, there's more getting cut away. And I like it there when the wall goes in a bit, there's less to cut away. So that'll follow the shape of the wall. Uh, I'm going to remove these base cupboards again. A mistake I made, I don't want to see if there's any here. See these wee, drop, these wee things here? The backs of them has always been a hassle. Why a hassle getting the backs on? And you meant to put them down between the, the chipboard and the wee crack. I haven't done it on them two units. I've done it on the rest. I haven't done it on them two units. Oh, I can't be arsed pulling them out. But... 
The last day I shoved down a big bag of food, big bag of dog food, and the dog food won't be standing there. It's in great big, big bags. And I pushed it back, and I pushed it back, and don't you know it, I pushed it back off the off the unit. So it's off at the bottom. But what I'm going to do now, see where you've got that hollow? When I take this unit out, I am reinforcing the back using, uh, I've got this wood out here. Uh, nice piece of real wood there, as I would call it. This wood left over that I took dismantled. I'm going to cut that to length and brace the back end cupboard. So even if you hit it with a sledgehammer, it ain't going to give way. Because I don't fancy pulling this out again. So a few screws you take out here, tilt them forward, and I'll put I'll screw the wood in from the side. Hard to explain here until I get it out. But I'm just going to toughen them up. Drawers is okay. And I'll toughen that one up as well. So the other system's alright. I've got them on the rest. But I've never seen them before in anything else. But even at that, that's not going to hold back a big bag of dog food. And you shove it in hard. Look at this cut now. I cut this now. I'm going to be sitting on top of that board. I'm going to cut it at a slight angle in the waist. Then again, allowing for the fact the wall might be 100% straight. But you see that these are crates. Like that there, it takes the weight. I I'm able to handle this big board without lifting heavy weights. That's the whole idea of this. So although it may look a bit clumsy, I can work on my own. And once I get over halfway, I'll move them crates then to the front. And that'll support it. Well, I get a cut. So I probably didn't have a tripod for this. Um, I could use a circular saw, but it's a ch chance I chip the top. It's not, chip the bit wouldn't matter because you're going to have it covered, but an odd one, no chips. Um, you can see that we line there now. See how crooked it is at the end, the way the wall goes. But do you always expect that in plaster? Plaster is hand goes out at the corners. So we'll get this cut now. I'll just climb on top. You know, we have a wee stool to get on top. A wee white stool out here too. See, this is why my shed's full of crap, you see. You need crap. If you didn't have crap, how could you do anything? Well, when I, when I finished my bedroom, do the kitchen, do the bedroom. Half that shed's going to be coming out to a kitchen. It's going to be all nice fancy decking and all. Put a wee stud wall and all up. So there's me now on top of the top. Humble dryers are ideal for this job. Then I just cut it, like so. Cut there now. There's the tiniest, tin you don't want a 100% dead square, you just want a wee curve on, the tiniest wee curve on. But as I got down to the end, a, a handsaw wants to cut straight, but I had to cut this crooked. So I held the wood out, and what actually happened then was the wood was going out too far. So what I had to do then, the end piece then, to finish it off, it doesn't matter, I just get a jigsaw, cut from the bottom up, cut a chunk off. It doesn't have to be that much off, but. It's why hard to cut a wee bit off, and that makes sure it's just tilted in. So whenever it goes to the wall, the Formica edge hits the wall. You don't want any wood sticking out to hold it out from the wall. So I'll just slide this in now again. I'm going to slide it out. Look, one hand, one hand. No need to lift up a big heavy worktop. Set it across like so. And then the other side down, slide that in. But I need two hands, because one hand will be here and one hand will be here. Make sure she doesn't slide off and you don't get the full wheel of the worktop. It's far handier. Look at that, boys, there. That's looking okay there with me. See the problem here, I shoved in that big bag of food along with all that food and I was shoving it in and the bottom was popped out. Now had I put the wee plastic clips in as opposed to that might not happen. Not everybody's cramming in the big bags like. Now there's two things I could do, I take that back away altogether and put wood on there to get the cupboard bigger. But I'm going to keep the back on it, it keeps damping all that away. So what I'm going to do now, I've the cupboard unscrewed now, took out these two screws, took out the two back screws. I'm going to gently pull the cupboard out, pop the back in, and then I'm going to um, put another piece of wood behind. I'm not going to bother with the wee plastic block. not going to be strong enough. 
and I'm going to put the a bat in the wood across, and that'll never happen again. Here's my solution there now. Piece of scrap pli uh, plywood lying around, real strong plywood. And what I did, I pushed it in, use a wee scrap of wood again. Draw a line on your scrap of wood, and then put it that side there, then, and draw your other line, and then you print it where the screws go. That job there took. If, if I was redoing this kitchen, I would do that to every cupboard. Wouldn't have to be so thick. The but the top's not going to come out of here because of um, the, the, that top, but that's going to hold it. The bottom is too weak. Uh, so I would have done that to all my cupboards. For the price of extra wee bit of wood, and you put on that, it wouldn't have cost much. It makes them far stronger. Got this tabletop fitted now. Uh, bit of the back piece. Hassle fit in the hob. Hassle. Haven't got it wired up. The, uh, the wires is there. I haven't got no power cable come down here yet. I went into the old kitchen stripped out. I'll take the power from the old kitchen. Uh, but if I wired up to the switch to here, that's just a matter of wiring it on now to the hob itself. And there's the old wire. So I'll, know, I'll copy that there for length when I peel the wires back. But that can be done some other time. Uh, this back piece. I'm not happy with these back pieces. I think the problem with these here. Um, it'd be normal to have tiles on the wall, like, and I thought, well, I don't like tiling. I, I can tile. I hate doing it. I thought, well, I'll cut around all them sockets. That's modern now, paint. So I thought I'd put on these buttons. Not happy with the buttons. Originally, these buttons were fitted by posh people who had um, marble worktops or we call that thin stuff now. The later stuff is very expensive. And so they can put on them back pieces. But us working class folk using chipboard, bad job. It's bare chipboard underneath. Bare chipboard and water do not go together. After even that, there's the plants there. The plants have got um, the formica on the bottom. And it curves around. The formica curves around. That would be better waterproof in there than that. So why, why they have left bare chipboard? That means you have to have an ugly seam of silicone shown. There's no way of doing it neat so the silicone doesn't show. Or the water's just going to go in and wreck it. So if I was doing it again and buying a new kitchen, I would tile the wall. Because uh, if I was using this kitchen here, I don't use the hub. If I was using the hub, I'd have to put a splash back on here. Splash back was £40. And all the thing I don't like about these, there's no end bits on them. The, that's the bit that puts me off the most. Just raw, raw chipboard. So you've got to cut that. Now that's for, because it gets damaged. Because you don't wrap it in cardboard, it's wrapped in plastic. So you've got to cut that off yourself. That means, look at that edge there. If I was to have a backsplash on there, I'd last that backsplash. The edge of that wood is going to be here. And I'm going to buy extra formica to paste on that edge. You never get it done right as a day of wear. Never. Well, I had it come with the edge already on it. You could have the factory edge there and then cut the edge, it doesn't show. And the one piece would have done it and it would have been a brilliant job like. Same way all these here all have the factory edges on them. Why not put a factory edge on the on them boards? So I think that's it's bad. Bad there's no factory edge on it. Uh got the slusher now. I'm going to make my wall. Get the lunar fed, get the chains, get the slusher. So I was going to cut that quickly. No time, rush till is ready. Then we need to go and get fed now, Pip. And that is why the kitchen is taking so long now in these holidays. Every day I'm away doing something. Last two days away getting the car. To the, and I might go up this divan now to do the solicitor. I ain't going up and down. I'm taking a run on a walk. Right, my Pip? Ah, oh, we'll get you fed.